Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white poison deck, which is my attempt at uh, updating the poison archetype to the current best-of-one standard metagame. And I started out with the Abzan poison deck from last year, you may remember it. It also included Venerated Rod Priest at one mana, but I quickly came to a few realizations. One is that the red decks are just faster than any poison deck ever could be, since they can often threaten lethal around turn 3 already. And then the second conclusion was that playing green wasn't really worth it anymore, since Rod Priest is at its best when the opponents are playing lots of spot removal, but in a meta game where the red decks are more of a combo deck with pump spells and fling effects, then uh, you're not gonna get the most out of the Rod Priest, and you're better off including a bit more interaction instead. And one of the better removal spells against the red decks is Anoint with Affliction, which is 2 mana to exile target creature with mana value 3 or less. Already a very good removal spell against any red deck, since you can exile a Cacophony Scamp or Heartfire Hero without taking damage, and it doesn't matter if the opponent has a pump spell in response, you still get to exile their creature, which is sometimes a problem if you rely too much on cutdown and the opponent can just grow their creature out of range. So Anoint is great, plus if we have Corrupted enabled, meaning the opponent has three or more poison counters, then now we get to exile any opposing creature, so it can also take care of larger threats like maybe a Shield Root out of the more controlling black decks in the format. So Anoint with Affliction was an easy inclusion, and then I also like Whisper of the Dross at 1 mana, giving creature minus 1 minus 1 on ton of turn, and we get to proliferate. So this is a nice instant speed, smaller version of the Drown and Icker. Both of these are great, since we can take out, once again, Cacophony's Camp or Hardfire Hero without taking damage by decreasing their power. And we also get to proliferate, so that's an additional way of applying poison to the opponent. And then once we've got kind of the removal taken care of, we can start looking at other ways to maybe upgrade the deck that we didn't have access to before, and Caretaker's Talent quickly came to the forefront as a 3-man enchantment, saying whenever one or more tokens enter, we get to draw a card, only triggers once each turn, can level it up to make a copy of a token, and then eventually give our tokens plus 2 plus 2. So this is great in combination with Skralv's Hive, which will make a 1-1 Might token each turn at the cost of 1 life, and if we have Corrupted enabled, we now get to give our toxic creatures a lifelink as well, which is a great way to outrace all the red decks once we get to those initial points of poison across. And then with a lifelink, we can also start pumping up our creatures with the Caretaker's Talent to completely take over. We also have the Seed Core in our mana base, which is a way of pumping up 1-1 one, one creatures, giving them a plus 2 plus 1. And we just need to have Corrupted enabled, so a 3 poison to activate this. So that can also be a way of growing our creatures, which plays quite well with Skrull's Hive giving a lifelink. And then Jawbone Duelist is also great here as a 1-1 one, one double strike and Toxic 1, so it applies 2 poison if it attacks. And we can also pump it up with a seed core making it a 3-2 double strike so it can even take out a 6 toughness creature and potentially gain 6 life with our Skrull's Hive active as well. And then rounding out the deck, at 1 mana we still have Crawling Chorus, which leaves behind a Might token when it dies, so it also plays well with our Caretaker's Talent, can maybe chum block with it during the opponent's turn, make a Might and still draw a card, while also drawing cards during our turn. And then there's the Skull Dweller 1-1 one, one Death Touch, so still good to block early, and then can also get some poison across. And then at 3 mana we've got the Annex Sentry, which can also exile a creature when it enters, so that's another good answer to some of the red creatures, but of course it's not an instant so the opponent might get a chance to plot a slick shot and get an attack in, so that's where the instant speed anoint with affliction is still important, also backed up by two more copies of Cutdown, and then for the late game we also have two copies of White Sun's Twilight as another token maker to synergize with a caretaker's talent and a way to gain more life and make more might tokens. Of course we're not forced to cast it for x equals 5 or more if we just want to make some might tokens and preserve our own board. And then besides the Seed Core pumping up our 1-1s, we also have the full set of Mirex, which is incredibly important in those grindier matchups, being able to make additional Might tokens end of turn, also a way of triggering the Caretaker's Talent during the opponent's turn to draw an additional card, and uh, also gives us a powerful Mana Sync, which is why I'm okay with playing 26 lanes in this deck, since if we want to cast a White Sense for X equals 5, we'll also need those additional land drops. And then lots of Black-White dual lands, including two Scour Barons, which enter stamped and gains life, just because we do need some additional mana fixing, when a lot of our lands may only produce colorless mana to cast some of our non-creature spells, but of course the Seed Core is still great at casting our Phyrexians. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, we've got 
a pretty balanced hand. Could use some spot removal, I suppose. The one thing we're missing, especially for up against aggro. And turn one mountain points in that direction. At least Cold Dweller is still kind of a speed bump for the Swiss Spear. And then we might want to get Duelist going to start gaining a life off Hive as soon as possible. And then Seed Core plus Duelist, especially with Lifelink, can gain us 6 life in one attack. So happy to block. Opponent might have a Pump Spell, Monster's Rage on the unblocked Swiss Spear. So now I could go double one drop, trade Skull Dweller for Swiss Spear, still have a Chorus. I think playing Duelist is still a little bit more efficient here, since that way next turn I get to play a two drop and a one drop, as opposed to being stuck with a pair of two drops. So yeah, when it's a close decision, looking at mana efficiency can also be a tiebreaker. Opponent shocks my face, so if they're not interested in answering the Duelist, they are down to one card in hand. So, yeah, if our opponent draws a few lands from here on out, we might get there. So Duelist still interested in attacking, I think. And now that we drew another Duelist, I think I prefer that over playing the Hive. I'll play it once we actually have Corrupted enabled. And then Skull Dweller will be a fine blocker for the Swiss Spear. Now a fun interaction, I guess, is with First Strike from the Double Strike on Duelist, we can get to Corrupted, and then with regular damage we can actually gain life already. So we can still maybe gain life of the Duelist this turn. Drown and Icker was an excellent draw as well. We'll also enable Corrupted for us. So I guess that's maybe the play here, just Drown the Swiss Spear. is going to Monstrous Rage, although that's not enough to save it since they can only have one monster roll token on one creature at the same time, so it's an easy mistake to make. And our opponent's going to pack it in onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we only have the one white source from Mirex to potentially cast Chorus or Talent, so this hand could get awkward pretty quick, so I don't think I can really keep this hand at least has the white mana covered. White Suns might be a bit ambitious, even though it's going to be powerful with talent later in the game. But now we are lacking some removal, which our first hand did at least have. Turn one island, so maybe we won't be under too much pressure. Now it's going to be tricky to resolve a Skrelv's Hive if our opponent is packing counter spells. So maybe we drip feed them another crawling chorus. Since it's really important that our enchantments hit the table. Opponent did have the phantom interference and forced to counter our one drop. So that feels like a win. Although Blast Zone actually an answer to all our one drops here. So now the plan is to maybe bait another counter spell with crawling chorus and then play Skrull's Hive. Could also play the Caretaker's Talent, which our opponent may feel inclined to counter, even though it doesn't immediately do anything. Would be nice to get both going, but that's going to be tricky. So, yeah, maybe try the Chorus into Skrull's Hive for now. Opponent with a Moment of Truth, so looks like the Hive is going to resolve at least. Opponent could take up the Blast Zone to eventually deal with the Hive. But that's going to take them a while. And then if our opponent taps out for, let's say, an Eluge, then uh, we can maybe resolve the talent in the meantime. Opponent bouncing our Chorus with Into the Flood Maw. Could have also bounced our enchantments if they give us a fish token in return. But maybe they have a different answer planned for the Hive. Opponent lets us untap. Alright, so now we're all set to stage of the game where we can activate Mirex instead of playing into the opponent's counter spell. So let's start by attacking 
opponent with a cramp to tap down our creatures. That's fine. So now talent will resolve. And I can still play a chorus. Which could be a card that we throw in front of the cramp just to make a chum blocker and draw with talent. Currently unable to cast the Anoint with Affliction since we don't have black mana for it. But our opponent's going to hang back with a cramp, so we draw off talents. White Suns could be powerful, and there's our black mana for next turn. So can potentially attack here to enable Corrupted. Since, yeah, I guess we do need Corrupted for Anoint to take out the opponent's larger creatures. So this turn can attack with everyone. And then if our opponent blocks a Chorus, it's one fewer creature that might die to the Blast Zone, so our opponent actually takes out the Might instead. That's fine. So our opponent at 4 Poison. And then probably better off leveling up the Talent as opposed to making a token with Mirex. So that we can get this to level 3 a little bit faster. But yeah, this game's going pretty much as well as it could have. We resolved our two key enchantments by forcing the opponent to tap out at awkward times. Cram's still gonna play defense, but our opponent's kind of getting overwhelmed by creatures. Maybe planning to use Blast Zone to deal with a Crawling Chorus. And we don't really need to cast another spell to win the game here, so our opponent's hanging on to counter spells is maybe not going to be too happy about that. Alright, so this turn can level up talents and still have Anoint with Affliction available. Could cast the Anoint first, just to potentially pay for a conditional counter spell. So let's start there. Put on the gates, that's fine. So I think level up and attack is the play now, as opposed to make a token with Mirex. I guess that's maybe still better. That way we get to draw a card during the opponent's turn. And I think we're far enough ahead that we can afford to attack all out. And our opponent's now reconsidering, does block the Crawling Chorus as opposed to the Might. And then a Dispersal can deal with one of our tokens. Yeah, our opponent needs to be able to quickly turn the corner, get some threats in play, like Aliush that we see here, and then uh, string together some card draw and some bound spells. And yeah, they do have the bound spells covered, at least. Still up to 5 poison. And we'll pass, ready to activate Mirex. A card like Haughty Jin could be quite threatening from the opponents if they can protect it, but we still have another Anoint. And there's Eliush with a discount here, turning Blaststone into an island. Although they might regret that if they ever do sacrifice the Blaststone, but of course it does make Eliush bigger as well, so it does still make sense. So, end of turn, we're just gonna make a Might, draw a card. Our opponent could still have a negate that they can cast, for all we know. White Suns could be cast for 5 to deal with both of the opponent's creatures, but of course we would be attacking first. So, yeah, that's one way we can go about it, or we can just anoint Eluge, and then once again Mirex in the opponent's turn. So, I think I'll start there. And then keep White Suns as kind of our trump card, in case anything goes wrong. That opponent is going to attempt to counter, but we can pay for it. Attack all out. So that's at least three poison coming across. May as well use a seed core to gain some extra life. And our opponent's going to pack it in, play a tap land, and then next turn we should be able to cross the finish line, plus still have some nice leftovers onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands maybe not the most diverse. We're missing some removal. 
For now, Skull Dweller, Double Hive. Can be good in certain matchups, thinking of the discard deck, which doesn't have many answers to enchantments. Can quickly get it on the battlefield and take over. Against Control, it's pretty good, assuming no temporary lockdown. So, I'll try it. And then the Skull Dweller, a good blocker for aggro decks, but yeah, looks like our opponent's red-white. The token deck, and yeah, Talent's a great draw. So now the main concern would be a temporary lockdown. Some versions have moved on to Brotherhood's End as their sweeper of choice, which uh, would be convenient here. And then opponent could also have enchantment removal in the form of a Get Lost, which might hit one of our enchantments here. Probably want to wait to play the talent until we can get immediate value, play it and level up to draw a card. Opponent's got the forge, so their own threat. Yeah, that's gonna hit pretty hard over time. And a duelist, so... If I play duelist, I'm basically begging my opponent to cast a sweeper, which, you know, if it's locked down would be especially painful. So step one, attack. Maybe it is reasonable to just play the talent here after all, so we can avoid lockdown exiling it, and then next turn start drawing extra cards if they just have a get loss to one for one remove it. I guess we can still use the map tokens. So yeah, I could be convinced to play talent after all. And then if our opponent plays their own talents, at least we're keeping up with the card advantage. And then if they do play a lockdown, we can get back on the board with Hive and Duelist. Eh, opponents got their own talent. They can level up second main to make a copy of a 2-1 horror token, which will stay in play. Since it's the forge giving the ability to sacrifice end of turn, and not the token having that property itself. But we do have a cut down. Alright, so we get to draw. Another Hive. So this turn, cut down their token, attack, then we'll be able to gain life off our Skrelv's Hive as well. And then, yeah, we're probably gonna end up running into a sweeper one way or the other. Okay, maybe I'll level up our caretaker's talents. Now we're in Sunfall territory as well, so another reason not to play too many creatures out. Yeah, maybe play another Hive which at least will drip feed tokens and then level up as opposed to keep up cut down for their token while it's still within range. Close call. I guess I will level up. So next turn I have the option of getting to level 3 if that's what we need. Especially now that we have lifelink, that could be quite valuable. But yeah, opponent had the sunfall, so keeping up cut down would have Maybe worked out a little bit better. Can still take out a 4-1 token next turn with cut down. So yeah, now we're in the stage of the game where if our opponent can just remove our creatures turn after turn while getting in with a forge, we're eventually gonna lose. But uh yeah, let's level up the talents pass, and then hope to get a hit in with our life-linking tokens. So our opponent draws. They can also sacrifice their token to a fountain port to still draw a card at least. They do not. They also have a blocker for our 3-3s. Three so our opponent is still pretty far ahead here, I would say. The early forge backed up by talent and sweepers. And there we have another one. So yeah, that's kind of the worst case scenario. Was hoping our opponent had more spot removal, but it was a bunch of sunfalls. So yeah, now our opponent is just threatening lethal, so I just need to put up as many blockers as I can. At least we managed to draw a lot of cards off our caretaker's talents. But uh, yeah, now if our opponent's got a lockdown or even a brotherhood's end, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. 
In fact, we would just die since our opponent can animate their tokens afterwards. So playing a Hive here would cost me two life, one from the caves and then one more in my upkeep. So that's starting to add up with the other Hives, so I don't think I want to commit another copy. Our opponent looking at maybe a Torch to Tower to exile the Chorus. If our opponent's playing Torch to Tower, it's a little bit more likely that they're on Brotherhood's end as opposed to temporary lockdown, just because the mana works out better that way. But I think both would be disastrous. At least Lockdown exiles their own Incubator tokens. Opponent abrades the Duelist. So it seems like they're going for lethal. They can animate both tokens. No, nope, opponent just attacking. This one tramples. So if our opponent has a Lightning Helix, we die anyway. Since we'd also take more damage off Skrell's Hive. I guess we do gain one life here off Hive as well. So I'll block while I can. Maybe we get an extra turn this way. But yeah, we would lose two from the Hive, so Helix is still game. So I guess with that in mind, maybe it wasn't even worth it. So our opponent lets us fall to three. And there's no instant speed life gain we could draw. So best I can do is attack. Opponent tries to block, at least a 4-4 we can exile. Do we now see the Helix to finish us off? Or do we actually gain some life? Alright, just an abraid on a token, so we at least gain 3. Although I don't think that's going to be enough to survive a 6 power token plus whatever else they want to do. So yeah, that's the end of the line for us, sadly. And yeah, we didn't have a bad draw for this matchup. Hive and Talent is where you want to be. But uh, our opponent had an excellent draw as well with Forge, Talent and plenty of removal to back it up. And our tokens being unable to block is quite relevant in this matchup. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a pretty slow hand, but it is powerful with Double Hive enabling the Caretaker's Talent to draw more cards. So hopefully we don't get uh, aggroed out since we're light on interaction. All right, don't mind seeing Restless Anchorage. Although cards like Temporary Lockdown are still pretty effective at dealing with a Hive. Still, I think, worth a shot. Could also start with a Duelist just because it does apply a lot of poison with a single attack. If they have a counter spell, I would rather have them counter the Duelist here, as opposed to the Hive, which is a little bit more resilient. So for now we can attack. Bonus got to Smite to exile it, so at least we don't need to worry about no more lies. So, can get the Hive going, since Talon doesn't do anything without it. And a Skull Dweller. And then next turn we also have the option of playing Talent and immediately leveling up to copy our Might token. So we get to draw a card. But we're still potentially concerned about a potential temporary lockdown. Okay, so step one attack again. See if we maybe get them to... Use a removal spell. Alright, not on my watch, exiling and attacking creatures. Her opponent's also prepared with lots of removal that can exile to fight those red decks. But now the coast is clear for talent, level up, draw a card. And now we've got a very nice engine going. That's harder for the opponent to disrupt. If they do play a lockdown now, at least we have a backup hive. So maybe our opponent's letting us overextend to then leverage a Sunfall to exile our board. But we don't really need to commit more creatures here. We can just leverage our Caretaker's Talents and then still have Cutdown available if they animate Restless Anchorage, for instance. Okay, 
opponent takes it. We're potentially going to win with damage as opposed to poison at this rate. I think I'm still potentially okay committing a Skull Dweller here, just to add one more threat to the board, as opposed to, yeah, let's say our opponent untaps after maybe drawing some cards. How can they threaten us? Maybe a Jace milling us could be their win condition, but uh, yeah, they still have a long way to go. I think I'm fine just passing. Our opponent is already kind of forced to cast a Sweeper, so I didn't feel the need to add more to the board. Skull Dweller would only be a 1-1, one -one, so it doesn't really help us deal more regular damage if that's our win condition. So do we see a Sweeper? We do not, and our opponent packs it in, so yeah, they couldn't handle our enchantment engine onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a keepable hand. Could play a Skull Dweller turn one off a Seed Core, play another one turn two, play a Tap Land. I think I'm just going to prioritize playing the Skrull's Hive and get that going as soon as possible. Facing a Red Aggro and Hardfire Hero, a great target for Annoyance. So, yeah, we'll uh, still play the Hive, I think. Sentry could also exile the hero without taking damage. So I'm fine if our opponent pumps it up. And our opponent's already moving in with a Bane Splitter. So now what we can do is place Cold Dweller. Maybe bait the opponent into committing another pump spell on the Hardfire Hero and then anoint with Affliction to exile it cleanly. Opponent with another Bane Splitter, trying to grow the Hardfire Hero some more. And yeah, now if it would die, it would deal 7 damage normally, but with Anoint we can just exile it. So our opponent might have a Monstrous Rage to give Trample. Yep. And then now we can Anoint, I don't think we're gonna get much more value out of this exchange. So that worked. Essentially a 4 for one even though they can still re-equip the Bane Splitter. Alright, so Sentry could get rid of the Swiss Spear. Even though Skull Dweller can just block it on the ground. So maybe I keep Sentry for a flying creature like a Slick Shot. And for now, could just pass with one Skull Dweller back, could play another. Although if I play Mirex, I can just make a token end of turn, which is maybe better. And then next turn, depending on the board state, we can maybe clear a path to attack and immediately get Corrupted enabled by dealing 3 poison. And then we can start gaining a life with our Hive, as well as bump our creatures with a Seed Core to quickly get out of range. Our opponent does indeed plot the Slick Shot, so that could still kill us if our opponent manages to play it and a couple pump spells alongside it. And now a talent is also quite good with the hive. So if we attack all out, our opponent can eat a might, but we still have corrupted enabled. And then I can still hang on to the sentry for slick shots. And then still goes Cold Dweller plus talent, I think. Yeah, let's uh, attack. So we can play Caretaker's Talents. Can even level it up right away to draw a card. And play another Skull Dweller. And then Anoint with Affliction is going to be good to have. So hopefully this is enough to survive. We have depleted a lot of the opponent's resources already. But they haven't been hitting their land drops, so their hand is likely all spells. Opponent does commit the slick shot. With only two mana, we're unlikely to die. So this is going to be a felonious rage. Alright, we're still at nine. If they have a burn together adventure, they can deal seven. And then from Skrull's Hive, we would go to one. So they actually got us very close. But we are about to draw a bunch of cards, gain some life, 
and then have plenty of answers at the ready. Our opponent on three poison, so cannot quite win the game right now. But uh, yeah, we're getting close. Play a sentry, and then ideally keep up anoint. Alternatively, we can just pump twice with the seed core to gain more life, which might be better actually. So just play sentry, exile their token for good. Attack with everyone. And then my two seed cores will essentially gain me four more life. In addition to taking out a Swiss Spear. This way we maximize our life gain. Back up to 11. And I don't see our opponents winning from this spot. But yeah, they had a very deadly hand if it weren't for that initial Anoint with Affliction. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand, I think. Some early creatures to get poison going, hopefully get to corrupted. And then Hanoin can take out any opposing creature. Myrix can make more tokens. And then I wouldn't mind drawing our enchantments. Alright, opponent red-white, so... Maybe another Boros Tokens deck. In which case this hand is pretty poorly set up for it. At least her opponent's off to a slower start. And we have Corrupted enabled, so the Seed Core can now be activated as well. Lots of tap plans, the life gain at least not relevant in this matchup. And yeah, let's go ahead and attack again. Three damage will still be enough to take out the duelist, so we'll just activate Mirex to make a token end of turn. Halfway, opponent at five poison. But uh I have to imagine they've got some heavy hitters in hand. Or Brass Forge, not bad. Alright, found our talent, that's a great draw. So, attack, play talent, level up. I guess we could technically use seed core as well. Just want to make sure they don't remove my one token before I get a copy with the talent. But I'm sure we'll see it before damage, if they have anything. So in that case, maybe pump up the uh, chorus. So we immediately get to draw. And we are threatening three more poison next turn, so we might start seeing the Sunfalls come out. Another talent for now. Keeping a token back to block is not going to work in the face of Annoyance. So our opponent's got different plans, although drawing another talent was excellent, so... We might have the late game covered. May as well attack first. And yeah, opponent just takes three poison and they die. So yeah, this game contrasts our previous game against Boros tokens quite nicely. We actually got some attacks in with the Jawbone Duelist to apply some poison. And then even though we didn't have the Skrull's Hive to pump out tokens, just got to chain together some Caretaker's Talents, which would be a great way to beat a bunch of sweepers like Sunfall. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a keepable hand. Turn one, I do want to play a creature. Maybe go for Skull Dweller, turn to Duelist. And then we can play the tap land. Put on the Golgari colors, so a mid-range deck. So getting these early attacks in with Duelist would be nice. But opponent is likely to have some answers. Anoint's also a great answer to the Dread Knights, which most Golgari decks will have. Opponent instead maybe a slightly different deck, playing white as well. So chances of Duelist connecting now are pretty low. 
But uh, still got to give it a try. And I get lost at least gives us some map tokens. So let us play Chorus and then I think go tap land, sack one map. Alright, Hive should be good in a slower matchup, even though another Get Lost could destroy it. And then, yeah, I'll just play Tap Land here. Alright, I see Blue Mana and a Heap Tarvis, our opponent on a multicolor domain deck with Atraxa. So, can expect some sweepers like Sunfall, a Leyline Binding as removal, and then Archangel of Wrath can also help them stabilize. But at least a life gain is not super helpful. This turn we're looking at an attack, play Skrull's Hive, and then I could keep up Anoint with Affliction for a potential blocker. Yeah, that seems fine. I don't think I need to sack the map token. And then now the Seed Core is also active. Opponent plays a frill back, that's kind of unfortunate since that can blow up the hive. So we'll still exile it here. Hive down. Alright, so now I can uh, activate Mirex to make an extra token. Might be more relevant than pumping with Seed Core or activating the map. I guess I can still activate the map at the very least. Duelist doesn't seem like the type of card I need. Caretaker's talents might be more important since I expect the removal is going to come flying pretty quickly now between sweepers and Atraxa finding more removal. Opponents at 6 poison, so if we can keep pumping out tokens with Mirex, they may not be able to keep up. And a Leyline Binding can exile the Chorus. That's fine. Whisper can at least proliferate here for one more poison, so it's not completely useless. And we get to connect for 2, no real need to pump with the Seed Core. And yeah, pass with the Mirex activation. The life gain, which is normally useful against aggro, doesn't help the opponents. So even if they tap out for an Atraxa, they still die. As we get to make another token, and we can proliferate. Try and get lost to my Skull Dweller. So I guess what we could do is activate Seed Core to pump it, then Whisper to proliferate and still get to map tokens. And then I'll still have enough mana to activate Mirex. If we just whispered first, then we would have missed out on the map tokens, which could be irrelevant. So opponent at 9 poison, and we're about to have two attackers. Alright, well, that's one way to stabilize, I guess. Making a bunch of beasts. So, yeah, herd migration typically not a better 7 drop, but in this case it is. Now we can still attack thanks to the Seed Core to trade for the opponent's creatures. Do I need to sack some maps? I think I just attack. Force the trades. And then activate Mirex. But yeah, Pona still has three beast tokens, that's a fast clock. So maybe our best way to win now is to find another card that proliferates, as it's harder for the opponent to interact with. Says no to a frillback. They do need to keep a blocker back. They could also have a removal spell left in hand, or another threat here. Heaped harvest, so if we draw removal now we can also win. And 
and a white Sun's Twilight. Well, that does wipe the board and make five mites, so that's not bad. Yeah, I guess that's better than doing anything else here. May as well attack in case our opponent forgets to block, but White Suns is happening. Otherwise the play might have been to use the Seed Core and then start sacking map tokens. So our opponent might have been forced to chum block with our beast. Since yeah, if we get a plus one counter on our 1-1, one, one, we cannot use a seed core anymore, so it's important to use it first and then maybe get some extra plus one counters. Opponent just drew a land, so they're dead to an attack. All right, so we get to see our black-white poison deck in action, and I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. We've got plenty of game against the more aggressive decks in the format, like Monorad, thanks to all our removal that decreases power and toughness, and especially Anoint with Affliction that exiles opposing creatures, so we don't take any damage of Heartfire Hero or Cacophony Scamp, and we also don't need to worry about our opponents saving their creatures with pump spells, which can sometimes happen if your removal is cut down and the opponent can grow their creature out of range. And then in the more control matchups, we still have the Skrull's Hive plus Caretaker's Talent Engine, which is quite powerful. If you were to play this in best of three, the opponent still needs to keep in answers for your early creatures like Jawbone Duelist, since if that goes unopposed it can deal a lot of poison very quickly, but it also allows you to still maybe bring in some discard spells to take away answers for your enchantments and then have those carry you to victory, while the opponent still needs to respect both our creature angle as well as the enchantments, so we're attacking from a lot of different angles. We're even capable of winning with regular damage as opposed to poison, thanks to Caretaker's talent pumping up our tokens, but usually poison's gonna be the way to go, and that's also a great way to ignore any incidental life gain that the opponent might have built into their deck, which a lot of decks have been doing nowadays to be better suited against all the red decks in the format, so we get to take advantage of that fact as well. And then our mana base also provides a ton of utility, with Mirex making 1-1 one -one tokens and the Seed Core pumping them up. So yeah, this seems like a very well-rounded deck, and it can still be adjusted in best of three, especially by bringing in discard spells and potentially additional threats and card draw. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.